Greetings, Judah. DFT here, getting in flight. Hey, guys, I'm not going to be long. Just want to take a moment, discuss what happened, or at least share my thoughts on what happened today uh, in D.C. You know, <laughs> interestingly enough, you know, we saw Esau at his finest showing his ass, for lack of a better word. Now, obviously, Esau has a little bit more in his repertoire than, you know, storming, you know, the nation's capital, uh, tearing up things, stealing, pissing on things, you know, making threats, pulling weapons on each other, even, you know, killing, you know, one of their own females, you know. But when you look at this, ask yourself a question, Judah. Where do you think this is going to lead? Where do, where, where do you think this is going? A year ago, if anyone had told you this would happen today, along with everything else that's happened already, you wouldn't have believed that, and surely you wouldn't have believed this. But here is where it is. So Judah, now that you see what Esau is willing to do, how far Esau is willing to go when Esau cannot have its way right here, and I guess now you're going to have to call this modern day Babylon because I can assure you anything that happened in Babylon is going on here in so-called America amongst their kind and ultimately coming to affect our kind. And Yah has told us through the word many, many, many times. Many, many times. Brother will turn against brother. You know, uh, mothers against fathers. You know, um, I mean, so mothers against their daughters, father against their sons. A man's enemies would be in his own household. He's given us many prophets to forewarn us of the times of Jacob's trouble. And you're beginning to see it. And I know many of you say, well, DFG, this had nothing to do with us. And it doesn't have anything to do with us today. But it will tomorrow. I'm not talking about January 7th tomorrow, I'm talking about in the future, in the foreseeable future. Because that's how it starts with Esau. You now Esau start fighting with each other, and then when they get tired of fighting each other, they turn around and say, you know, where those niggas at? Let's go take it out on them. You see, this is not the first sedition act that you've seen. You saw it you know, if you had been around, you, had saw it in, you, had, you would have seen it in the Civil War. And if you believe the lying history books, you would have saw it in the Revolutionary War. Acts of sedition. Storming government buildings. But as you saw today, see when it comes down to Esau, these laws don't apply to them. I mean, a bunch of crazed, seditious, so-called patriots stormed the White House. And many of them, most of them, left without a scratch. Oh, and by the way, for all you Biden duped supporters, you're going to be nice. It's late. Why not be nice? You know what he said? Don't, you know, just a few people acting this way is not representation of America. Really? Yet, you know, in 1994, when he did his crime bill speech, he didn't talk about what a few of us was doing. He pretty much bam, 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 bam blast us all and said he wasn't going to have his daughters, his mother, his sons get knocked over the head by a bunch of wild beasts, animals out of the jungle. Lock them up. Same Joe Biden. Still don't understand who it is you're talking about? When it came to his kind, there were just a few people acting up on the verge of sedition. Now, how do you storm the nation's capital? Take it over aggressively, and that's not an act of sedition. But when you're white and Joe Biden is your man or Joe Biden is of your kind, that's exactly what he's going to say. And when you're not white, so-called black, like he told Sharpton and the rest of those coons, shut up. You better worry about the Mexicans. I don't want to hear your mess. Whatever the Constitution says, that's what I'm going to do, and I'm not changing any Constitution for none of y'all Coons. That's what he said. He didn't use coons, but none of y'all. I'm not. I'm not messing with the. Well, where is the Constitution? I'm sure there's something written in the Constitution. 
that if you storm the nation's capital by force without permission and license, that's an act of sedition, and everybody is supposed to go to jail. I'm sure that's in the law, but he didn't talk, he wasn't talking about that. But again, this is where we are. This is how Esau acts. And he and, and, and the way he behaves amongst his kind shows you just how little he think about our kind. Because he would have never allowed that to happen if some of our brothers or sisters had marched on the nation's capital and forced their way into it. Man, there would have been more bloodshed out there, more heads cracked out there, more handcuffs, more dogs, bites, you know, more people stumped and scratched and locked up. It would have been a major league tsunami of violence against our people. But then again, as I said to you many times, Judah, this is not your home. But again, you love the ways of the heathens. You just gave them all your little stimulus money, some of you. You damn sure poured in your money to support their Christmas and their New Year's and their Thanksgiving, right? You did all that support for them. And they showed you how much you meant to them today. Because when it came down to the people who are like them, they were nice and calm and conciliatory. Anytime we've done anything close to those kind of acts, that we're called a bunch of wild heathens and thugs. Right, Obama? Unruly thugs, and we're not going to tolerate it. Isn't that what he said to our brothers and sisters in Ferguson, Missouri, when they were, when they were protesting about the murder of our young brother, Michael Brown? Yeah, that's what they said. But here again now, you get a chance to peek behind the veil. Because Yah said in the end days, knowledge will be increased, that your eyes will be open. At least the wise would understand is what he said. Of course, the wicked amongst us, you know, they'll make up some justification, some rationalization. And like Biden, they say it was just a few people just venting, just showing a little frustration. By attacking... <laughs> You know, the Congress, with an act of sedition, very similar to what happened in the Revolutionary War, could have happened with the Civil War, had Lincoln not raised the army quick enough to stop him. But this, again, you know, I guess like Esau said, you know, it's white man stuff, you know. You niggas need to stay your black ass, you know, in your place. And guess what? <laughs> You're right on that one. We need to sit it out. We don't have. We should have no part. Y'all say, come out from among them. Be you separate. Don't touch the unclean thing. And I want to specify unclean. What's unclean? <laughs> you saw it today. You saw the filth. The same one who pushed all this other filth upon everybody. There's, there's the, the ones who walk with murder in their hearts. The seed of the serpent. The liars. The children of the liars. You saw them in a government that is in full support of that kind of wicked, wretched behavior. You, know, you got Trump over there, you know, dog whistling as usual, talking. I don't saying talking loud, but ain't saying nothing. Isn't that way James Brown had that song? Yo, they talking loud, but saying nothing. That's Trump. And you got Biden over there to just look clever, little wicked, you know, racist devil that he is. Take enough for them, but when it come down to us, with all venom in his voice, putting us in our place. At least, that's what he wants to be doing. <laughs> but you know what, brothers and sisters? Those days are done. But you, Judah, do not get involved in his foolishness. Stand guard. Again, I hope you got your provisions. I hope you got protection. I hope you, when I say provision, I'm talking about everything from first aid to bullets to food to water and to a place of shelter. When I say provision. Because they're coming. They're coming. When they get tired of wrestling with each other and name calling each other and slapping each other around and they really get lathered up and that liquor and the drugs and meth and opioids start to really kick in. They're coming to a neighborhood near you real soon. And you had better be ready. And if you're not ready, I want you to think about, go back and think about the movie Rosewood. Remember Rosewood? John singing his movie about uh, this small city in Florida around, I think, 1811, 18, I'm sorry, 1911, 1910. Remember what they did, how they slaughtered? Even the little, you know, 
the little pickaninny who was sleeping with the store owner. Even a man who thought he was a good friend of the store owner. Remember, he told him, I can't help you. Get out of here. All, you know, your friends, you know, your, your, your so-called, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm going to leave it right there. If you saw the movie, then you know exactly what happened. Went through there and slaughtered everybody. They didn't give a damn who you were and what your standings were with them. Same thing is coming our way. But y'all warned us. He called it the, 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 the again, as, as I said a moment ago, he said it will be called, you know what I'm saying, the sorrows. You know, Jacob's sorrows. Jacob is Israel. So again, I, you know, I just wanted to share my little bit with you. You know, just what I thought about it. How, how unjust these laws truly are when it comes down to us. But the laws were made to, to keep us in check, but not to, you know, by them to keep them in power, but never apply to them. All right? The law was made for us. Like, remember that? Have, you know, a while back, about a year or so ago, this, 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 um, this uh, guy who was flying, he was in the airport, and he was trying to go somewhere, and he, and he didn't want them to either check his luggage or something he didn't want to do. And so they got the, the, the TSA agents called the police. Police came up on him, and they, they were struggling with him, wrestling him. And once they got him on the ground, he told them, get off me, get off me. Don't treat me like I'm no black man. I'm not, don't treat me like I'm no black man. Remember him saying that? And a lot of people laughed like, ha, ha. They finally got, you didn't listen to what the man said. He was reminding them that, hey, I'm white. This shit don't apply to me. And I'm telling you guys, they're white. Stay out of their shit. Let them get shitty. But remember, when they finish slinging shit at each other, they coming at you for blood. If you got melanin in your skin, you call yourself Hispanic, you call yourself Puerto Rican, Dominican, Venezuelan, Argentinian, Peruvian, Colombian, Belizean, Colombian. If you got melanin in your skin, they coming for you. But you don't believe DFG. Maybe you'll believe Yah. We'll see.